morning everybody now we can sort of see how the space looks a little better without the big truck in here so i got the truck outside it's warming up getting the juices flowing got the pickup inside we're gonna go get our trailer go pick up our load and head over to uh around edmonton alberta it's gonna be fun let's get going Timmy's. And the gun. And the gun. And the gun. And the Is that it? No, I probably forgot something. And off we go with our empty skateboard behind us. Tri axle flatbed. Into Winnipeg. Gotta load another load of those floor joists. I think it's the exact same load. But we'll find out when we get there. Met my father-in-law, Jerry, at work just now. We now work together. He's coming here to work at Keystone as well. Super excited about that. Now I got both dads here. <laughs> my dad and my father-in-law. A truck and family. I'm not too sure what truck they're gonna give him yet but uh, I gave him a few suggestions as to what I think are the best ones. I'll let him make up his own mind once, uh, once he gets into them. He's here for orientation this week and uh, should be hitting the road either later this week or first thing next week. Oh, that's pretty excited. He's, he's pretty excited, I'm pretty excited. I gotta pick up my load on the east side of Winnipeg and get moving. I'm hoping to get unloaded tomorrow yet though I'm gonna have to rush, like usual. Worst case scenario, I get unloaded Thursday morning and go get reloaded Thursday afternoon, and then I'm back Friday evening. Britt and I got a date on Saturday. We're going to Cirque du Soleil. Okay, buds. We got ourselves loaded up. Take a look at these apples. I don't know what that is, but they wanted, uh, that's part of the load. So, here we go. Beautiful, eh? About another 60,000 pounds of wood on the trailer, bringing me up to an approximate gross weight of 95,000 pounds, or maybe 94,000. Haven't scaled it yet, but we're not overweight. We're doing good. That's why we got the tri-axle. We can have 17,000 kilograms on these axles here. 24,000 on those axles there. I think I just got duped by a guy driving a handy bus. Pulled up to the stoplight beside me. And he was saying something like, oh, there's something wrong. There's something wrong pointing at my trailer. Something's gonna fly off. I'm like, what? Can't be, I just left, right? So I found a safe place to pull over here. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong. I think he was just joking. He's probably having a laugh that he got me to pull over and check my load, but what did that get him? I don't get it. I don't get it. Yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna go take one more look, but there's nothing wrong. From the sounds of it, when he was trying to get my attention, it sounded like he said my headache rack was open and that my straps could fall out and stuff, right? I'm like, huh? Like, okay, maybe, maybe I forgot to latch up my, my headache rack. So I'm like, oh, thank you very much, thank you. I pulled over right away and no, they were closed. I think I just got duped. It's pulling my leg. I hope he tells all his friends about how funny he is. Just got back in from checking everything again. Nothing wrong. You got me. 
You got me, whoever you are in your handy van. You got me. Hope you're getting a good laugh. Maybe he watches the videos and he's sitting there chuckling now that I included it in the vlog. Well, what am I supposed to do? Like, if someone tells me there's something wrong, I'm gonna come, I'm gonna pull over and check. It's not really uh, an accomplishment. That's weird, right? Did I maybe misunderstand him? Like, was he just yelling at me? I hadn't changed lanes or anything for the longest time, so it's not like I would have cut anyone off by accident. I was just minding my own business in my lane. Maybe because I'm driving so slow and he's got to make it to his handy van appointment. Gonna have some very upset customers if he's late, I guess. I don't know. What in the world? Yeah, walked around, checked everything three times. There's nothing wrong. Just like there was nothing wrong five minutes ago when I did my pre-trip. That's why I did my pre-trip. nervous you know <laughs> did he see something I didn't see because I do this for a living and I know what I'm looking for and I saw nothing wrong ah he probably got mad at me for driving too slow or something he was probably yelling at me for that I couldn't quite understand what he was saying but it looked like he was saying that my headache rack was open or that there was something wrong behind my truck right it sounded like that I did an extra pre-trip. I even logged it in here as an extra load check. Nothing more I can do, really. There's nothing that could have possibly flown off the trailer. My load is all secured with way too many straps. It's not going anywhere. We turn on to the south perimeter westbound now on the south side of Winnipeg. Gonna make our way to Atchison. I'll be there uh, tomorrow afternoon sometime. I don't know if I'm gonna make it there in time to get unloaded tomorrow though. A little bit of a later start today, but that's because we had to unload this trailer first. It was still loaded up with those reels from last week, eh? And they had to put that on a different trailer. So we needed this triaxle for this load. Come on, little buddy. Come on, little buddy, you can do it. Look at you go. Oh, that's a Malibu. I thought that was a Civic. Oh, I apologize. Thought crime. So here we roll. We're in western, southwestern Manitoba. Coming up on the town of Verdon and then coming up on the border with Saskatchewan. You guys getting tired of the prairies yet? I'm not. I love it out here. Especially this time of year with the canola fields, they're still yellow, right? But it's August now, which means all the fields are gonna start ripening and then they're gonna start harvesting them. And you know what that means? That is an ominous sign. That means winter is coming. I didn't say it, you said it. You thought it before I said it. That means it was your thought. It wasn't mine. I'm not taking ownership of that one. I don't think I'm gonna make it. Uh, these guys who unload these uh, joists in Atchison, they, they leave at 3.30, which means they want you unloaded and out of their yard by 3.30. And it takes them a good hour to get these off if there's, if it takes as long as last time. So I'd have to get there by 2.30. Otherwise, that's just the way things are. I don't think I'm gonna make it. If I had the hours to drive straight through and I didn't stop once, I'd get there at about quarter to five in the morning. But I have to
to stop for a break. At least an eight hour break here in Canada. That's five, let's just round it up to five because there's a pre-trip in the morning. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, one o'clock. That's with absolutely no breaks. I'm gonna have to stop for fuel. I'm gonna have to stop for bathroom breaks. And I have to stop to check my load every couple of, uh, couple of hours. Which will bring us very, very close to 2.30. So maybe we'll make it. Maybe we won't. Depends if I have any delays. Like, any delay whatsoever. Is gonna cause us to be unloaded the next day. Which is fine, because I'm not gonna get reloaded till the next day anyways. It, it would just be nice to get going to wherever my reload is, right? So we'll try. We're gonna do our best. But I make no promises. I'm at the mercy of the elements, the road, the traffic, my bladder, and my fuel tanks. This is a heavy load we're pulling, so... I mean, I may not have to fuel till we get to Edmonton, till after we get unloaded. I could probably get all the way there. I don't like to run my tanks that low, though. Even in the summertime. Balgoni, Saskatchewan. We're gonna go right past today. I'm trying to get as far as I can today. We're really trying to make our delivery for tomorrow. Still don't know if we'll make it, but we're gonna give it our best shot. I want to make you all aware about in my comment section, some spam comments pop up almost every day. It's very frustrating on my end having to deal with this, but just be aware that there are accounts that'll pop up and respond to you. It'll they'll they'll use my profile picture. But if it's a comment from me, look beside the picture. It's gonna say Trucker Josh Vlogs. It should match the name on my channel. Then you know it's from me. I've had multiple people message me, is this you? Is this you? Look at the username. Usually these spam commenters will say, hey, I have something for you or inbox me or reach out to me here and then there'll be like a WhatsApp number or something in the username there. Don't click on that, that's spam. They're trying to scam you out of something. I, I, I don't know, I've never clicked on it. I don't know what they want. It's very frustrating. I don't know why they keep making new accounts. Just so just be aware, if you receive a comment from an account that has my profile picture, it's not necessarily me, okay? Just look at the username. If it doesn't say Trucker Josh Vlogs, report it as spam. It's just spammers, you know? They got nothing better to do with their lives. They've been making comments in my comment section, replying to people for years now. And you know, you, you block them, you report them, they just create 10 other accounts. It's Just want you guys to know, because there's been a, been a couple of people asking already. There's the Flying J over there. Not swinging in there this time. Rare, right? Usually I would. Laser focus today. 
laser focused. So other than that, I know I have been, uh, I've been seeing those spam comments and it's a lot of YouTubers that are dealing with that. There, it's not just me. Uh, don't engage with them, don't click on them. Just report them as spam and eventually YouTube will just automatically plop them into a spam folder and I mean, that's what I do. It's kind of annoying when you know you're trying to create an atmosphere for your channel, for your viewers, and you get somebody coming in there like, hey, posing as me, right? They they have the uh, the same profile picture as me on purpose. That's to trick you into engaging with them. Oh, did my CB radio just make a sound? That's a first. Did I tell you already in the vlog? I got a CB radio in here now. I'm a real trucker now. How about that, eh? I found one laying around in our shed at home. I'll have to tell you about it later. Yeah, it was just laying around in a box in our shed and I found it over the weekend. So I was like, I'll throw it in the truck, see what happens. I've had it on all day, haven't heard anything. Then again, nobody uses it up here. <laughs> I haven't had one in probably like eight years. I don't know, people always say, oh, it prevents accidents. No, drivers paying attention prevent accidents. If you're paying attention, you shouldn't need a CB radio. You should be driving according to conditions. Don't rely on that to save your life or to save you from getting into an accident. You shouldn't need that to prevent accidents. But I figure, you know, I'll plop it in here, see what happens. See if anyone's yapping on there. Usually I don't like having one because it's just a bunch of motor miles on there usually. And if I go into the US, <laughs> a lot more people use it in the US, but you can't understand a thing they're saying. They all like speak with the microphone inside their mouth. And it's like come on. What? What? Can't understand what they're saying anyway. But, here we are living the dream, right? <laughs> I'm a real trucker now. Woo! It only took me 16 years. I'm gonna have to get a better CB radio. Oh, we'll see if this one works. For the amount I'll use it, it'll work. It's not that fancy. It's a Cobra 29 something something. I'll show you later. Let's get through Regina here. I wanna at least get up to Saskatoon tonight. At least, maybe to Lloydminster, we'll see. into Saskatoon here. I think this is where we're gonna stop for tonight. I'm on the south end of town, I'm gonna go around to the north side where the Flying J is. Of course, I'm sure you could have guessed that. See if there's any parking for us there. If not, we'll go over uh, next door to Husky. Or I guess it's Esso now. Whoops, I guess we don't need these while we're in town. The locals wouldn't like those very much, though I personally love them. My Jake breaks. Gotta remember it is 10.30 at night here right now. We're in mountain time. So back home in Manitoba, it's 11.30. I found myself on a little bit of an unwanted detour. Guess I'm turning here. The road I usually take was closed suddenly for construction. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Saskatoon or not, but uh, right before the lights, the right lane is closed 
and there's no way to get around it, you gotta turn right instead of going straight. It's, I guess it'd be kind of hard to explain to someone who hasn't been here before, but you'll just have to trust me. It kind of caught me off guard, so taking a little bit of an unwanted detour here through, uh, luckily this is a commercial zone, commercial area. And this should take me back to the main road. I think. Then again, I'm pretty sure that if I turn right, because Flying J is that way, I can probably weasel my way that way as well. But I don't know for sure. <laughs> I don't really want to risk getting caught in some residential zone or something. Seems like a very uh, quiet street. <laughs> I'm the only one here. I'm the only guy who didn't know my lane was closed. Everybody else knew and went around. Can I get back here? There's a light there, I see. But the sign is saying detour go straight. Okay. Yeah, that road is closed there too. Okay. Good thing I didn't turn down there. I wouldn't be able to turn around then. I'd have to back up. There was that little sign on the bottom of the stop sign there that said detour straight ahead. So that was my that was my biggest hint that maybe I should just keep going straight. Gets you a little bit nervous getting on unfamiliar roads and detours in a big truck, 75 foot unit. Okay. Now the arrow on the detour sign is pointing left. So we will go left. <laughs> Saskatoon messing with me. Too late for this stuff, man. There we go. I think I'm gonna need both lanes to make this right turn, though. Not sure. Can I do that? I'm gonna take both. Yeah. It's a little bit of a tight corner. I'm gonna, this is called a button hook, where I come from the right lane and then I, right before the corner, I hook it into the left lane and then I button hook it around the corner. That's to make sure my trailer gets around this fire hydrant up here on the curb. <laughs> no one likes running over fire hydrants. Can ruin your day. When you do this though, you gotta make sure that those four wheelers don't, don't sneak in there, you know? It happens more often than it should. And then they look at you like you're the problem. We're the truck drivers, we're always the problem, right? There we go. See, this is the road I wanted to be on. I'm gonna turn right here, and that'll take me to Flying J. Oh, it's good to see the roads are still terrible. I like, I like stability, consistency and stability, you know? There we go, let's get ourselves around this corner. Ah, now we're back on track. That was fun. A little bit of sightseeing in uh, industrial Saskatoon at night. <laughs> Fully loaded with a triaxle. <laughs> that's always fun. At least 
we got out of that pickle without getting ourselves into trouble. Made it here to Saskatoon on Idle Wild Drive. I think that's what it's called. <laughs> Found some parking at the Flying J and uh, went inside, grabbed a couple of goodies. Uh, mostly just like I like having these protein bars. It's like a meal replacement bar for breakfast. I'm trying to eat less. Uh, Got to lose a little bit of weight, and I don't always have time to exercise, so. My solution to that is just to eat less, but also, you know, these aren't the healthiest things out there. I'm not going to say I'm eating healthy, but uh, this is what I have for breakfast until lunch. And uh, we'll worry about that tomorrow. Grab myself something to drink, some vitamin water, even though it's probably pure sugar. Who are we kidding, right? <laughs> Today was a pretty good day though. I uh, got up super early at home, uh, reasonably early. I went to the shop, got the truck ready to go. And then uh, Bob tailed over to the trailer, had to unload the trailer this morning. And then, uh, or get it unloaded. I didn't actually unload it myself. Who do you think I am? <laughs> then run into Winnipeg, get it loaded, tied it down myself and uh, made it all the way out here. We drove a total of 900 and some kilometers today, about nine and a half hours of driving. Tomorrow we have five and a half to six hours of driving left. I think I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna stop here for my eight hours. That's what I'm required to stop for on Canadian hours of service. Stop here for my eight hours. We're gonna book it over to Edmonton and I think I, think I should be there around two o'clock. Maybe 1.30, 1.30, 2 o'clock. We're going to try our best anyways. We'll see what happens. So we'll be up early again tomorrow and uh, we'll make another video for you then. Um, it was a smooth ride across Manitoba and Saskatchewan. Nothing to report. Uh, my dad wasn't too far behind me. He's also going to Edmonton. I think he stopped in Regina. Uh, he's headed to Edmonton for tomorrow too. My father-in-law, he's also uh, had his first day of orientation today at Keystone here as well so that's exciting I think I explained that a little bit before as well too so he'll be driving truck soon as well uh, he used to drive truck when my wife was uh, a little girl and uh, he was a truck driver which helped a lot when I met my wife because Britt understood what it what being a truck driver was she understood the trucking lifestyle which benefited me quite a bit <laughs> so he uh, he's going back to trucking and uh oh, i'm excited to have him on the team here it's gonna be great so uh dad and father-in-law maybe we'll all run on one big long convoy one day who knows i don't i don't run convoy much i have a cb radio in here now but uh not one peep on it all day i'll probably hear more on it when i'm in the u.s people like to chat on the cb there more they they like the cb more there we'll see what happens Anyways, uh, that's all I have to say for today. We made it here safely, and that's all that counts. So uh, tomorrow's another day, and I'll see you then. I'll see you in the morning for morning coffee. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell down there as well so you don't miss it.